Micro Campus is a unique opportunity to travel outside the bubble and experience many new activities and find new discoveries that you'll never find anywhere else. In this spring of 2015, our group Kryptonite set out to Shizou. We each had a topic that we investigated. My topic is about cormorant fishing in Lake Erhai. And so in my journey to understand cormorant fishing, I come to categorize it into three parts. It's past, it's present, and it's future. Firstly, I'll be talking about the past of cormorant fishing in Lake Erhai. Cormorant fishing has existed for a long time, starting almost a thousand years ago. Since the cormorants are natural fish hunters, fishermen only need to teach them signals and obedience in order to domesticate them. In the recent decades, cormorant fishing has been in decline due to many changes in China's economy through advanced equipment and modern techniques which catches more fish out competing the use of cormorants in fishing. Furthermore, society growth and tourism causes damage to Lake Erhai such as industrial waste, runoff from agriculture, and others which affects cormorant fishing in many ways. Many locals that have interviewed also have recalled that the waters of Lake Erhai are extremely transparent and drinkable during the younger days. Mr. Yang, a common fisherman that I've been interviewing for a while now, says that in his younger days, the day the lake used to have plenty of fish to catch, but nowadays there aren't as much fish to catch as before. Mr. Yang learned to fish with comrades when he was seven. He learned it while fishing with his dad and his uncle. When he was a teenager, he then started fishing as a business catching fish and selling them in the local markets. Recently, about six years ago, Mr. Young and a couple of other cormorant fishing families partnered up with the government to create a cormorant fishing tourism business. This was due to because of the decline in cormorant use since it no longer yields more profit than the other techniques such as net fishing and the government would like to preserve this technique for tourists as it was a traditional method used in the area. In the partnership, the government will cover the costs of the equipment and other issues regarding the business but take part parts of the common fisherman's income. The common fisherman will also have to run shows for tourists and catch fish with the comrades. This partnership seems to be a win-win for everyone as it helps the common fisherman such as Mr. Young continue to utilize his lifelong skills as well as being able to live on them. Nowadays, Mr. Yang wakes up every morning at 6 and works till late in the afternoon at around 5.30. He runs about 10 tourist shows a day, catching around 2 large fishes per show, which can be sold to tourists for 50 RMB, no matter the size of the fish. Those that are not bought by the tourists can also be sold to other common fishermen for 15 RMB. If he still has fish left over, he will walk to the nearby market and sell the fish to them in the evening. Mr. Yang also has to make daily trips to the market to purchase more fishes to feed the comrades as rewards for their efforts. Uh, every day, he feeds 500 grams of fish to the males and 400 grams to the female comrades due to the female comrades having a small, slower metabolism. Unlike net fishermen, Mr. Young and other cormorant fishermen can fish all year round and has no regulations on when to fish because the government runs their business. Mr. Young also has sons and daughters which he hopes that he could pass down his cormorant fishing skills, thus continuing the Asian tradition of cormorant fishing. Uh, this is an example of Mr. Young running a cormorant fishing show for tourists. Cormorant fishing has been used for almost a thousand years. It is an eco-friendly way of fishing, creating a natural partnership 
between the fishermen and its comrades, because both parties rely on each other to survive. Now the fish technique is slowly dying as we utilize other methods that consist of machinery and other unnatural ways to collect fish. Even Lake Erhai is becoming more and more polluted due to our focus on economic advancement and not seeing the environmental consequences we pose on the environment. This can heavily impact the economy of many villages that border Lake Erhai as it supplies them with fish, jobs and trade which is essential for the growth of a small village. It is up to our generation in the future to realize these situations and connect with nature once again. In conclusion, learning about cormorant fishing has been an interesting experience here in Shizou. I learned many facts as well as many details of the lives of numerous people, such as Mr. Yang, the cormorant fisherman. I would also like to thank everyone, especially my teachers, Mr. Taffel and Ms. Mime, and Mr. Yang, who gave me lots of advice and stood patiently by me all the way through my project, continuously showing interest and support for my work. Michael Campus has given me many unique perspectives here in Shizou, which I will remember for the rest of my life.